Now, for the last couple days, I've been seeing a lot of articles popping up online talking about how Ryan Johnson defended the Star Wars prequel trilogy and essentially defended George Lucas as well. And how that happened is he responded to someone on Twitter who asked him to say something nice about the prequels, and well, he had this to say. Lucas made a gorgeous seven-hour-long movie for children about how entitlement and fear of loss turns good people into fascists, and did it while spearheading nearly every technical sea change in modern filmmaking of the past 30 years. And before even getting too far into this, let me just say that Ryan Johnson is certainly entitled to his thoughts and opinions on the prequels to interpret them however he wants. And I don't even necessarily disagree with him here, though I do find it a curious way to describe the movies, which I'll get more into in a bit. But he's not entirely wrong, and I certainly don't want to be one of those people who just automatically opposes or disagrees with something just because the quote-unquote other side said it. It's childish and happens way too often in politics and in the media and pretty much everywhere else these days. And I even have to flat out agree with the last part of his tweet that George Lucas pushing the boundaries of technology with those films with the prequels set the stage for the modern era of special effects. Lucas did the same thing with the original trilogy 40 years ago. He changed the way movies were made and what they could even be or look like and he ushered in the age of the blockbuster. Johnson's also not technically wrong about Star Wars being for kids. Lucas has said this time and time again about who Star Wars is for. He even said of the first movie that his target audience was 12-year-old boys who are, yes, still very much children. But at the same time, when you're that age, you're moving into young adulthood. These are kids that are coming of age. And Star Wars, the first two trilogies, and even the Clone Wars, were really coming of age stories that not only kids going through that could relate to, but that adults that had already gone through it could also easily relate to it and empathize with these characters. This was arguably one of the keys to the massive success of Star Wars. Virtually everyone could relate to it and get something out of it. Furthermore, Lucas has said of the original trilogy, or at least the first Star Wars movie, that he wanted to reinvigorate spirituality in the young, not necessarily religion or one religion in particular, but rather the idea of believing in something greater than the self. And since being old enough to really start to look at and analyze these films, I've come to realize that's indeed the overall message of Star Wars, to believe and put faith into something bigger than you, to be selfless, to look beyond your own selfish wants and desires, to realize the actions of the individual who only thinks inward, who only takes and never gives, can have dire consequences on the many. For me, Star Wars is about the struggle we all face. It's about choosing between doing what's right, what might be difficult, sacrificing and finding joy in that sacrifice, in knowing you've helped others and are part of something bigger than yourself, and that you've contributed to it in your own way, and knowing that others will now hopefully be there for you versus doing what is wrong, what is easy, and just taking and not worrying about others or any sort of greater good, which then separates you from others, from anything larger than the self, and puts you at odds with others that you fear are just like you, that only want to take what you have. I mean, there's a reason why there can only be two Sith, one to hold the power and the other to crave it. Any more than that just leads to endless infighting and backstabbing because none of them trust each other or really care about anything beyond the self. Large numbers of Sith are just a collection of individuals with their own personal goals that may loosely align at times, but as soon as they don't, the group, the greater good, doesn't matter anymore. Unlike the Jedi, which is an organization of like-minded individuals all striving to achieve the exact same goal or goals. The problem with the Jedi of the prequel era is it becomes more about the organization and the rules of their code than it did about the actual goal of keeping peace and justice, policy and procedure outweighed actual results or overt signs from the Force like the coming of the Chosen One. It wasn't about the greater good anymore, it was about their greater good. It was no longer about following the will of the Force, it was about following the will of the Republic, a Republic that had become corrupt and would soon be ruled by a Sith Lord in disguise. And so if you ask me what the prequels were about, I'd give you a very simple and straightforward answer. I'd say it's all about what happens when selfish desires, especially of those in power, take precedent over everything and everyone else, when the greater good and bigger picture are lost, when people are controlled by fear and look for anything that might make them feel safe and secure again. And so, in a way, I don't think what Ryan Johnson said about them is wrong per se. I think it's just a very narrow view of them when I think there's a much broader message to be had, as Lucas has always maintained. It's about what happens when people are selfish and afraid over what happens when they're selfless and free of fear. 
and I can't help but find it a little odd how he talks about these being kids movies, yet if you could go back in time and ask the kids of the prequel era what these movies were about when they were coming out, none of them would say it's about how fear of loss and entitlement lead to fascism. Again, that's a very narrow or specific view. And even if you could ask those very same kids today who are now adults what the prequels were about, I'd be surprised if many at all gave you an answer like that one. Another important factor in all of this is manipulation on the part of Palpatine, especially over Anakin. I mean, Anakin didn't have any sense of entitlement when he was young. He thought only of others. Yes, he was ambitious and confident in Episode 1, but again, he never thought he deserved anything just because. It isn't until Episode 2 when we learn that Palpatine kept his word about watching Anakin's career with great interest that we begin to see why he suddenly does have a sense of entitlement, if you want to call it that. Why he thinks he's being held back and that he'll be the most powerful Jedi ever someday. It's because Palpatine is putting all of that into his head. Palpatine is acting like the father figure he never had in his life and exploiting that position and influence he has over Anakin. And if I were to look at the prequels with a very narrow or specific view, I'd say the message is to never trust a person in a position of power who tells you exactly everything you want to hear, to instead question if they truly have your best interest in mind, or if they're only using you for their own best interest. It's about how fear can control you, and that those who control the fear, or make you believe in it, have all the power. And yes, those are certainly things to keep in mind or think about today in the real world. If someone is telling you to be afraid, and then in the very next breath is offering you a solution to that, ask yourself what they might stand to gain from you following their lead. This is what happened to Anakin. Palpatine gave him a reason to fear losing his wife, and to doubt the Jedi who probably would have helped him, and then he offered Anakin a solution. And Anakin ultimately ends up nothing more than his puppet. Anyway, before going too far down that rabbit hole, as I said at the start, Johnson can have his own views on the prequels, as can you and everyone else out there. I know some people were upset by what he said in this tweet, and again, it was an interesting take to say the least, and the whole it's made for kids thing oftentimes is said by those just trying to be dismissive of fan concerns. But again, I just find it funny how he says it's for kids and then gives this very specific theme or message that virtually no 12-year-old is going to fully understand. In fact, that sounds like a fun video idea, asking 12-year-olds what fascism is. Something tells me far more are going to say it has something to do with clothing or fashion trends over mentioning anything about authoritarian regimes. Well, that's all I've got for this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you thought of Johnson's comments or what you think the prequels were supposed to be about. Either way, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.